Hello, good people. It's been too long. I'm sorry about that, but it couldn't really be helped. I've been seeing it all over. More and more people are waking up to the fact that the world isn't right. And I'd like to feel comforted knowing that so many now have eyes to see and want a better world. But I'm worried because of this trap that I'm seeing. It appears to me that our bodies and the life around us are being invaded by engineered biological machines, computation-based Trojan horses, and I need you to please listen and consider what I have to say. I've been working on this project for a very long time. It's been a labor of love. So please help me share this video or repost it wherever you can and the sources get it out to people and then they can make up their minds if it's something that they should be considering more because they say that the only people who are free to choose are those who know the choices it can feel overwhelming to look at these things and how widespread this situation already is but i refuse to think that ignoring the problem is the way to go so let me show you what I've been looking at. Bacillus subtilis is a spore bacteria that's used as a universal cell factory for industry, agriculture, biomaterials, and pharmaceuticals, producing enzymes, proteins, antibiotics, vitamins, amino acids. A group of Israeli students even reprogrammed Bacillus subtilis to produce synthetic honey. And who knows what else? It can survive in a continuously changing environment on cheap substrates, and it has the label generally recognized as safe in the U.S., so there are no real hurdles to adding it to products that are being consumed. There's plans to use engineered living materials like Bacillus subtilis to remake the world, from bricks and airport runways to living bandages that grow within the body. Plans are to build back better with the bioeconomy using microbes that are engineered like living factories to produce so-called sustainable products from your food to construction materials. The bioeconomy is exploding with growth and everyday products we use are transforming and shifting to be obtained through computationally designed microbes. The feedstock for these microbes varies. There's options to use switchgrass, trees, sugarcane, corn stalk, whatever's grown in a given area, the microbes can be tailored and so can the feedstock. But it's not just plants that they feed to their little factories. We've mentioned to you before about the companies using NASA technology to utilize CO2 to create proteins and things. We've also mentioned how DARPA the U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has talked about feeding trash to soldiers. Of course, it's not directly added to the menu. It's used as a feedstock for any number of patented life forms set up to produce this and that molecule, eventually resulting in the food replacement products and more. Why do you think Bill and Melinda Gates were holding such huge positions in the two largest garbage companies in the U.S.? They can feed the microbes any kind of biomass you have. They've even fed them crap, like animal poop, to make some shit-based pharmaceuticals, which sounds so healing. And basically what we do is uh, convert cheap waste streams into high-value components uh, using fermentation for both uh, non-food and food applications. We are involved in using fermentation for production of all kinds of uh, food ingredients. So there we basically convert as cheap as possible waste streams using selected organisms and producing um, uh, ingredients um, that are now currently produced uh, in more chemical ways. And uh, examples are uh, vitamins, flavors, uh, antimicrobials, not just your trash or your waste, but they can also feed your grandma to them. So the end um, solution is basically just made up of amino acids, soaps, uh, peptides, nutrients, um, just the basic building blocks of life. It's just our bodies are so nutrient dense. You may have noticed all over the world's news the topic of water cremation, the cleaner, greener way to go. 
The recent death of a character of the NWO has caused a huge media campaign all about it, and right on time, considering it's 2022 now and that Soylent Green year. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I do not mean to say here that Bacillus subtilis is the only concern in this takeover of all the life. Not hardly. I just chose to deep dive that one to show some of how far it goes. But the human gut microbiome, for example, is an entire ecosystem of tiny life. And there are mad scientists and duped young students out there investigating all the different organisms and how they can reprogram them for their uses. Now they see that China is one of the largest banana growers in the world and they need to save their banana plants from a terrible fungus. And the only way they've found to stop it is using a Bacillus subtilis bioagent registered in China as a pesticide and they are exploring other strains of Bacillus. Reportedly, to boost the yield of black currants, strawberries, and raspberries, there's been experiments with repeated application of probiotics, including bacillus spores, to the plants as they grow. They consider the plant host to be a bioreactor that allows the growth of their engineered microbes in plant tissues and entry into seeds as vehicles for their long-term shelf-stable storage. They say that plant bioreactors are particularly useful for the cultivation of microbes that, unlike artificial bioreactor setups, industrial or laboratory, that require machinery, the plant bioreactors are uniquely capable of providing a suitable environment for the microbes with little to no human intervention required. Coming out of the EU and headed to the US, more patented strains of Bacillus subtilis will be unleashed on tomatoes, lettuce, cucumbers, grapes, apples, citrus, wheat, potatoes, and more because the agriculture sector is looking for new so-called green and low toxic products and they say synthetic life fits the bill. It brings to my mind the bee vectoring technology that we looked at a while back where they made bees walk through bacillus spores and other biological products when entering or exiting the hive, delivering this payload to organic strawberry plants, for example. The biofilm that's then created was said to protect the fruit from mold. And both of those methods of inoculating crops leads us to the application of probiotic spores for tracking purposes. Remember back when we looked at this brand of regenerative farming that's being pushed, where they're changing the phytobiome of the crops grown by Big Ag and their global agripreneurs, which is said to cause a step change in the plants. No genetic engineering of the plant itself required. They are adding their engineered life to the soil and they're redesigning what life should live on and inside the crops and telling you it's a greener way to go since they won't need the synthetic fertilizers and pesticides anymore when in reality they are launching a takeover of any native life that may have survived the assault of the previous campaigns waged by Monsatan and co. 2020 hit and the world disinfected on a scale never before seen and some kept doing it. And now enter all this new life. There's all kinds of focus on gut health now in the COVID-based world. And just as they've been sequencing all of the life on the planet, big and small, they've been working to map the tiny life inside of you, what has survived the chemical assault over the years, to help discover new therapeutic strategies and inspire their biological nanomachines to build you back better, or so it may seem. And how could we even know if we knew what we were looking for? How could we see if the strains we're being inundated with have been computationally altered to produce unnatural substances when they say they can bioengineer bacillus subtilis spores while leaving their genome intact? And are we really just dealing with simple bacteria? Scientists studied the biofilm development of bacillus subtilis and showed that these bacteria are multicellular organisms like we are. While looking at things being done with Bacillus subtilis, I came across Yena Satella and her work with the MIT Center for Art, Science, and Technology. 
Yena has been training machine learning algorithms by having the computer observe Bacillus subtilis. She says to teach machines how to transcribe Martian, a collaboration said to render AI as machine learning just as mysterious as AI alien intelligence. It's kind of unsettling to listen to the bacterial Martian communications that Yena's art produces, and it doesn't surprise me that the topic of witchcraft is thrown around with her projects. I'll just say that for our conversation, and as Yena knows, I framed my questions to a work around a simple genealogy of Western esoteric countercultures. So my questions take the starting point and elements of witchcraft, spiritualism, and psychedelia that can be found in Yena's work and research. Now, esoterica uh, can be broadly defined as um, embodied other knowledges and knowledge of others, or as embodied other intelligences and intelligence of others. And that's including more than human others, of course, whether they're ghosts or aliens or more abstract entities such as fields of energy and other imperceptible agents and arenas of being. It puts all of the talk of alien disclosure in a whole other light for me. As we've showed before, entities like Singularity University and the medical professionals, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and such that attend their events, they are striving to reinvent us and the world. If you ask Naveen Jain, good friend and board member of Singularity University, what he thinks of this microbial situation, What's up, everyone? We're back with Naveen Jain. We are going to be talking about evolution and the microbiome. Naveen, you kind of blew my mind with this. You were, you were, t- you were talking about how microbes decided to make humans in order to spread themselves across the world and how this is p- kind of interesting. Could it be potential that humans make AI to spread AI across the universe? Yes. You know, so one could argue, in fact, uh, is it the microbes that actually created humans? And even though we may believe that we are creating AI, what if the AI actually created us to spread itself, right? (laughs) So um, what if the microbes were actually the AI? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Holy cow. And his company is leading the charge to have you ingesting computationally designed everything in the name of health, which is just such a hot topic anymore. Companies have been designing bacillus spores to be deployed as vaccines that can be taken orally or intranasally. There was talk of a bacillus subtilis spore mucosal vax that was said to be engineered to express SARS-CoV-2 antigens. A few months after it was announced, the partners developing it were calling it a different kind of prophylactic treatment for COVID rather than being a vaccine. Scientists at Sporgen have been exploiting Bacillus subtilis as the delivery agent for vaccines since before 2020 came along, developing vaccines for tetanus, anthrax, influenza, and now for the Rona. And At the same time they announced their maybe Sporvax product for the Rona, Sporgen announced that the FDA had issued a generally recognized as safe notice for its probiotic strain of Bacillus subtilis, intended for use as an ingredient in food and drinks like grocery store milk drinks, sports drinks, hot beverages, cereals, cookies, gums, and more. They say this strain of Bacillus subtilis fights gut pathogens as well as preventing respiratory infections. There's a company called DreamTech that's looking to advance their Bacillus subtilis oral COVID antibody booster vaccine that's stable at room temperatures since it's spore-based. They say their transgenic spores are released in the small intestine where a mucosal-specific immune response is generated. Through an invasive study, they reported having found that the spores hadn't just woken up, but that they also reproduced in the digestive tract. They said that germination of spore-forming probiotics in the small intestine is of particular importance considering that a significant portion of the immune system is located in that part of the gut, and the majority of digestion and nutrient absorption occurs there. 
years back at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, one of their grand global challenges was looking at the gastrointestinal tract of humans and animals as living bioreactors capable of taking in food and producing highly complex microbiota. They were looking for new strategies for manufacturing gut microbial therapeutics for global applications, saying that they were particularly open to high-risk, unproven concepts that could yield novel systems. They say that to restore the microbial diversity characteristic of a robust gut microbiome, it is likely that a consortium of strains is required. In their chicken and rodent studies, they talk about how Bacillus subtilis probiotics have been shown to regulate digestive enzymes, synthesize and release antimicrobial and antibiotic compounds, increase immunity and neurochemical activities, functioning as an antidepressant and anti-anxiety agent. There are companies working on programming probiotic bacteria to treat many different diseases. They say that living cells have the ability to do what chemicals can't. They can sense and respond. They can deliver enzymes and small molecules, triggering chemical cascades in your body. And they say that by engineering probiotics, the goal is to create personalized, localized, and highly controlled medications for treating diseases of the gut and beyond. But, like, maybe I want to be um, invaded by engineered bacteria, you know, so, so I'd like to drink a probiotic yogurt um, that is a diagnostic platform, depending on the disease state of my gut, what comes out of me is a different color, telling me which specialist I should go see. That sounds a lot better than a colonoscopy. Um, you know, maybe I'd like to ingest an engineered salmonella that's been made totally safe. Uh, from an evolutionary perspective, we'll rename it Safanella, and uh, this will go into my body and be engineered to attack tumors. Uh, or, you know, like the, the yeast that make the rose oil are great, but it's still feeding into this centralized, industrialized manufacturing process. I'd rather Ginkgo upload the DNA sequence for the genes that make those odorants onto the web, and then I could download that wherever I am, print the DNA, and put that DNA into the microbes on my skin so I have programmable distributed manufacturing of the perfume. Why would I ever have duty-free catalogs and things going up down the aisles of the planes to slather on some stuff? It's crazy. So I want to be invaded by engineered microbes. <laughs> We've showed here in the past how there are companies who are saying that their creations will do the body's work better through synthetic biology. And here it is again. Their engineered biological machines, their Trojan horses, entering cells and releasing proteins to modify the behavior of those cells. And I bet you would feel good. All of a sudden, people who have been neglecting and destroying their microbiome through the antibiotic world we've been living in, they're planning for you to continually put an army of bio-based nanomachines in you, whether you know it or not, and you'll have better function. If the designers want you to, they might not sometimes. Probiotics, also called psychobiotics, are being tapped to treat various diseases, including social stress-induced mental disorders in humans and other guinea pigs. Bacillus subtilis as a probiotic is said to balance your mood and mental well-being. They are being advertised as a way to manage daily stress. The people at Deerland Probiotics and Enzymes have been sponsoring research into their DE111 Bacillus subtilis probiotic with clinical studies showing its impact on digestive and cardio health and sports performance, recovery, and in children. They tested their spores on children attending daycare ages 2 to 6, and at the time they said that on the dawn of a new, highly modified school year where health takes center stage, this study is highly encouraging to formulate natural and safe products for young children to promote immunity and overall well-being so that they can concentrate on learning. And that they're just at the tip of the iceberg in terms of what they're discovering about probiotic capabilities. They say Bacillus subtilis strains have reduced aggressive behaviors in chickens following social challenges and that it could be a suitable strategy for increasing host's mental health. 
and rodent studies have shown that social stress responses can be normalized with certain probiotics, successfully attenuating anxiety and depressive behaviors in rat offspring that were separated from their mothers. Like I've said, I think this stuff is going to make people feel good, better than maybe they have in years. They're saying this DE111 strain goes beyond digestive health benefits and has potential sports nutrition applications as well, that it's been shown scientifically to be a flexible health ingredient with wide-ranging food and beverage applications that can be aimed at improving digestion, bolstering immunity, and overall well-being, and improving athletic conditioning, performance, and desirable body composition. For years, companies producing these spore-based probiotics have talked about pharmaceutical positioning for their products, but they wanted to keep it as a supplement so it would have a wider reach, like being included in your protein shake. With the fear campaign of the last couple years making people so stressed out and also more health conscious, I wonder if we could find ourselves having these engineered probiotics added to the public water supply. Fluoridation paved the way with mass medication. They already show how their spore strains can be distributed evenly through the drinking water of animals. Back in 2016, MIT was telling us about their spin-out, SynLogic, looking to create a new class of medicines by reprogramming bacteria in your guts as living therapeutics. So-called synthetic biotics, which sense and correct metabolic abnormalities that underlie some major diseases and rare genetic disorders. It's funny how much of everything mad science boils down to these rare diseases. Synlogic is partnered with Ginkgo Bioworks, the synthetic biology company whose foundries are said to dissect organisms and put them back together to make biological nanobots that perform functions for their creators. Ginkgo Bioworks, the company that is regularly sampling the youth of this country and who knows where else, is already cranking out new drugs with their collaborators at Synlogic. The first one said to begin clinical development this year, their computation-based synthetic biotic going from preclinical proof of concept to candidate strain in the space of a year. I'm not trying to say that I think that they're so advanced with this tech that they can puppeteer us and control our everything. I don't know. But they do show that they can dull down chickens and remove aggression. And they mention using their living factories on humans too. And if they know how to tone you down, I have to think that they could go the other way. In the book, The Body Snatchers, there was only one difference between the people and their replacements after encountering the space spores. They lacked real emotion. I know it's just fiction, but with all that I've been looking into and with what I see happening in the world today, I really just have to wonder. But the control is coming with their planned future focusing heavily on personalized medicine with their 21st century cures and even your diet tailored to your chemistry, or so they say. The life inside of us has a lot to do with who we are and how we feel, and these so-called scientists and their funders have long been studying how to tweak the brain and the body to bend life to their desires and goals. For years, researchers have talked about developing a remote control of sorts to ultimately control the behavior of cells neighboring their engineered bacterial cells. Now researchers say they've discovered how to design a genetic switch in bacteria that removes the reverting spring so that adding only a pulse of cheap natural nutrient can switch the cell to chemical production mode permanently. They say their switch should be widely applicable to many industrially relevant microbes and for the synthesis of almost any chemical. So it seems that they're saying that at any time they could introduce a trigger to the food or the water, maybe the air, and there's maybe an irreversible production switch. They are loading people up with these tiny factories that they can trigger for nonstop production by introducing the trip to the environment. And they can design these things to produce all sorts of molecules 
They plan to produce everything with biology in the near future. The pharmaceutical companies have been producing drugs this way for years, and some of Big Food has too. Now you're going to be the bioreactor, or at least the guinea pig for figuring out how that all works. I see the situation as they are getting a lot of people to ingest a steady supply of spores. These biological nanomachines, which can modify behavior, create who knows what, and be reporting on your body. This is the tracking and tracing, reporting on you from the inside out. The foods you ingest, there could be signature spores and different locations you frequent. These little reporters will tell on you. One company we've already looked at uses engineered Bacillus subtilis spores for tracking purposes. They said that they were working in lettuce and coffee and that the traction they've gained spans multiple countries and supply chains, including meat, dairy, cannabis, and more. With the DNA barcoding of these probiotic spores, scientists at Harvard Medical School, supported by DARPA of course, found they could identify specific areas where spores had passed through. People are putting these things in them and on them. Chromec, another DARPA partner we've talked about, has already started sampling the air to track and trace molecules and detect so-called threats. At Stanford, they use the term SEED, Self-Replicating Environmentally Embedded Diagnostic, for their modified Bacillus subtilis that detects specific DNA or RNA sequences in their environment and then produces a customizable readout. Microbes are said to have been used to sense, identify, and quantify environmental pollutants for decades. Now, synthesized microbial sensors are said to be able to target specific toxins and respond in a variety of ways, that they can be engineered to generate an electrochemical, thermal, acoustic, or bioluminescent signal when encountering a desired pollutant. Researchers in Scotland were engineering bacteria to convert heavy metals to metallic nanoparticles, which could be used in medicine industry, and fuels. It makes me think that since they are repopulating us with their tinker toys, what's to say these biobots couldn't break down the toxins and metals built up inside of us even, converting it to usable nanoparticles? And maybe that sounds like fantasy. I just can't ignore the possibility that with their work in swarm technologies, self-assembling origami proteins, and microbes that pump out so-called green electronic material, nanowires, to be used in biosensors and bioelectronics, and how there's talk that these microbial biowires would make it easier to have tech implanted in our bodies. Maybe I have a good imagination. But I'm not just pulling these biocontrol ideas out of my own nightmares. DARPA told us they had been working on this stuff with their adapter efforts, what's referred to as cyborg implants for soldiers. That would be a miniature factory full of bacteria producing therapeutic substances on demand. With their reported $33 million in funding for the project. And today I introduce to you the adapter project. The Advanced Acclimation and Protection Tool for Environmental Readiness is ADAPTA. It's located within the DARPA Biological Technologies Office, DARPA slash BTO. ADAPTA aims to develop a travel adapter for the human body, an implantable or ingestible bioelectronic carrier that contains cellular factories and compounds, that is therapies, to be released upon secure external activation. So I want you to imagine a device like this, that would trigger something in the human body via an implantable or ingestible device. So you either swallow it or you're implanted with it and you use a smartphone or some kind of hub device to tether to the implant. And that would trigger an external activation of the therapies. So imagine a soldier on deployment having the command and control to trigger a release of therapies to prevent particular conditions in their own body. Imagine they start to feel an onset of diarrhea uh, or they feel uh, that their sleep has completely been disrupted by jet lag or shift lag. So the system is designed to either entrain the sleep cycle, 
halving the time to re-establish the normal sleep pattern after a disruption or to eliminate the top five bacterial sources of traveler's diarrhea. Consider a remote control capability to wellness and recovery. Adapter is a way to physically interface with the human body, a type of wireless living pharmacy via an implantable device that attempts to control the body's circadian clock, aiding to regulate cycles by providing accurate diagnostics and response mechanisms. So if we think about Wiener again, think about modeling all the rhythms and cycles in the human body and being able to tap into them in a way to control them, almost like a command and control from the outside in. So it should not surprise us that government agencies like DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, are heavily considering what the future might behold and soliciting proposals from cross-disciplinary technical research teams to ponder on one possible socio-technical imaginary, this of a warfighter with an implantable device that has the edge. A future where implants are tethered to smartphones are commonplace and not the exception but the norm. And the question I pose to all of you is, is this where we're going? Said to be starting their human testing in 2024, they hope to provide an internal pharmacy to treat a vast range of medical conditions and that commercial versions could be used to monitor and treat wide ranges of situations in elderly and more. They say they want to create an implantable living pharmacy combining synthetic biology with bioelectronics to deliver substances of interest on demand directly into the bloodstream. No need to carry drugs, no need to inject therapeutics, and no need to refill the device. It's like an implantable pharmacy on a chip that never runs out. That it could be as simple as press a button to engage their cyborg immune system. Now said to be under fast-track development, this wirelessly controlled bioelectronic implant or swallowed device for the DARPA adapter project and researchers believe this technology could be modified to release other types of therapies like for mental disorders and aging related issues. Lynn Rothschild and her team at NASA Ames Research Center are working with Bacillus subtilis for their Astro Pharmacy. The plan being to have a library of thousands and thousands of kinds of drugs in freeze-dried engineered spores that can be saved for years without refrigeration. Consider with the DARPA project, the mad scientists at MIT working on their so-called mother machine, an ingestible device that takes up residence in the stomach and delivers drugs like caffeine, melatonin, and acetaminophen to the body, and Lynn Rothschild with her library of spores, all designed to produce different drugs. These mad scientists and the young minds in school who are tapped to help further the Synbio world, they've been working for years to develop these drug-making biological machines. Think about once they get them all tuned up and in the food, in the drinks, no more pill popping or injections. With the wireless activation of DARPA's adapter tech, you could be chilled right out, whether you like it or not. They're also laying out the case to show how Bacillus subtilis has helped to combat sickness for ages in those who consume it. We should not forget that what's used now in these Franken probiotics and cyborg implants are patented, defined, and designed novel creations engineered to produce a desired outcome. Little computationally designed factories. And it's all made possible by synthetic biology. Every aspect of life will exist at the whim of mad scientists and their machines, assuming their plans work. They are leading a global assault with their Trojan horses. When your body is flooded with their engineered biological machines, doing the functions that your body used to do, maybe, I wonder at what point we could reasonably call transhumanism. Would you even know that you'd been transitioned to a microbiome of computation-based designer life forms tripping your chemical cascades? A step change to the next version of humanity from the inside out. It's transhumanism through biological machines.
I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that we are under attack, all of us. This is bigger than any of the issues I see and hear being discussed, and it's way bigger and scarier than what I've shown you here. It's worse than I ever imagined. Jeff and I told you back before the hard reset of 2020 how we needed to get closer to our food, eliminate the middlemen, which understandably is harder in some places, and we need to warn others of this synthetic life invasion. If people want the reported benefits of probiotic sour milk elixirs that are said to have been the mainstay of people all around the world for who even knows how long, they're going to need to get a hold of some cows or sheep, horses or camels, something that has been eating a pretty natural to it diet, free from gut life killing Mon Satan and co feed, and you're going to want to use the innards of one to inoculate and brew the milk from the others over and over and over, old world style. There is also mention of being able to kick off the ferment with flour and honey instead of the animal bag. I just read an old book on the subject. There's all sorts of ways that people of the world fermented their milk for preservation needs, sometimes for alcohol, and maybe they knew for health benefits. Outside of doing that, I don't think you're going to get the real thing, more of what the scientists want you to have. Even in this book I have from 1911, the fathers of the probiotic movement were already reproducing in the lab what they thought were the important parts of the brews that had been sampled. What we have at our disposal today and the land of convenience comes from the likes of Christian Hansen and their laboratories, not your ancestors. Who knows how long we might naturally live if we didn't have our adversaries attacking us and filling our food and water supply with poisons. Maybe the long lifespan attributed to the fermented milks was more the result of a better life, and the milk fermentation was merely food preservation. I don't know. I can't say for sure that our situation can be helped. We're pretty far down the path of their science experiments, but I don't see why not try. Really, all you can change is yourself. So if we all just try to do our best in all of our daily decisions and everybody be the change that they want to see, avoid taking in these Trojan horses whenever possible and perhaps share this information with people you love, maybe we could change the world. Otherwise, it's probably only going to get worse from here. Let them get their tech to the point of being personalized Tailor made for you, and how could we ever hope to escape then or to save our friends and family? So much is out in the open now. More people than ever can see that there's something really wrong with the world. I can't get beyond the feeling of what if they're telling us only to have their sin bio machines make us not care anymore. They warned us, told us, it relieves them of their karmic debt because they said what they were doing, and people just stepped right up. I feel that the only chance that we have is for as many people as possible to get this warning. I mean, maybe I'm all wrong here, and maybe I'm just overreaching, but I don't think so. And I hope you will consider what I've shown here and check out the sources to all that I've mentioned. They're linked below this video, unless maybe you're watching this on another platform or another channel. And I hope that's the case because that means the information's getting out there, which is what we need. And if that's the case and the sources aren't listed, you can find them at pleasestoptheride.com.